Polyatomic ions are groups of atoms that are bonded together and collectively they have a charge. Usually they're negative, but there's a few exceptions where they have positive charges. But just understand that most of these polyatomic ions end in either eight or eight. And these polyatomic ions can form ionic compounds with other elements. You are not expected to memorize the formulas and the charges of every single polyatomic ion out there. It's just near impossible. For someone like me, I rely on this chart here. It's the common polyatomic ion chart. And this just has some of the more commonly used polyatomic ions that you'll find in ionic compounds. So just taking a quick glance at this chart, you notice that most of them end in either ite or eight. There's a few exceptions, which I'll explain in just a moment. But just to name off a couple, you have nitrite, nitrate, sulfite, sulfate, chromate, dichromate, arsenate. So these are some of the more common polyatomic ions on this list. And you can see how they give you the name and they give you the formula of the ion. So for example, nitrate is the formula NO3. There's a nitrogen bonded to three oxygens. And then there's this dash symbol that's in the chart. So all, if all you see is a dash, just assume that a one is also there because chemists, we get really lazy. So we like to omit the ones. So if you don't see a number and all you see is either a plus symbol or a negative symbol, just assume a charge is there. So just looking at the chart, most of these polyatomic ions are negative one. It's not until you get to carbonate that you start to see negative twos. And then finally, you have your negative threes, starting with phosphate and then arsenate. So these are the common polyatomic ions. And we rely on this chart a whole lot in chemistry. And again, you're not expected to memorize these ions. But moving forward, the more and more we start to name ionic compounds, you'll just kind of pick up on these naturally. I want to point out four exceptions to the rule where they are polyatomics, but they don't end in ite nor eight. And the first one is special, and I box this one in blue. This is the only one that has a positive charge on the chart, and that is ammonium. Ammonium is nitrogen bonded to four hydrogens, and it's got a plus one charge. The other three polyatomic ions all have negative charges, and they are cyanide, which is CN negative one, you also have hydroxide, which is OH negative one. And finally, you have peroxide, which is an O2 with a two negative charge. Magnesium can form a bond with the polyatomic ion sulfate to form Epsom salt. Epsom salt is the common name for magnesium sulfate, which has many household uses, such as treating ankle sprains or fertilizing plants. So we're finally here. You're going to learn how to name and write formulas for ionic compounds that contain polyatomic ions. And just like how we did in my part one video for monatomic ions, we're going to use a crisscross method. And because you know that every single polyatomic, or most of them, end in eight and eight, you can actually just use a chart to look for their formula and their charge. You crisscross them. And if you ever have multiples of a polyatomic, just make sure you use parentheses. Let's start off really simple here. We're going to do potassium nitrite. And because it ends in ITE, it's going to be on the chart. But first, I'm going to write potassium symbol, which is K. The charge is plus one. And now I look on the chart. I look for nitrite. And the formula is NO2. It's one nitrogen bonded to two oxygens. And this whole compound has a charge of negative one. Okay, in the chart, remember, it has just a dash, but assume a one is there if there is no number written. Now we crisscross, just like how we did for the monatomic version. Crisscross your charges, bring them down. Let's write them out. One. Parentheses, NO2, one. Now again, in chemistry, you can omit the ones. So let's clean it up a bit, and we're going to call this... KNO2 for potassium nitrite. Let's now do potassium nitrate. Okay, so the symbol is K, the charge is plus one. This is nitrate, so it's different from nitrite in that it has one more oxygen. 
Okay, the charge is still a negative one. So now I will crisscross my charges over, bring the one over, bring the one over, write them out. We've got K1, NO3, parentheses, one, just to be formal. But again, you can cross these out. And now we've got KNO3 for potassium nitrate. And as you get faster, you'll recognize like, okay, I could probably omit or skip the parentheses here because the ones will cancel. This one is calcium chlorate. I'm just trying to give you guys a good mix of different combinations and charges. Calcium is a plus two charge. Chlorate is ClO3, that's the formula, and the charge is negative. Remember, if it's just a dash, it's a negative one. Assume that a one is there. Cross the two over. Cross the one over. Write down what you see. CA1, ClO3, parentheses, two. So in the language of chemistry, that parentheses two means two sets of chlorate. So you've got Ca, parentheses, ClO3, parentheses, little two, which means, again, two sets of chlorate. And you can think of it like this, but don't write your formula this way. I'm just showing you. You can think of it like this. That two that's on the outside can actually distribute. So you've got two chlorines and six oxygens. Okay, but don't write it like that. Leave it in that form that I have boxed right there. So calcium chlorate, again, is Ca, ClO3, 2. Let's try magnesium carbonate. Magnesium is a plus 2 charge. Carbonate, once again, just look in the chart. If you don't know off the top of your head, it's a CO3 with a negative 2 charge. And I'm giving you an example where the charges are the same. So eventually they will simplify, and you're going to see in just a moment. But first, let's write it down. You'll get to the point where you could do these in your head. You can mentally cross them over, but I'm just showing you the work. Okay, and so this is Mg2, parentheses, CO3, parentheses, 2. And they simplify to a 1 to 1 ratio. Close the gap between Mg and C. And now you just call it MgCO3 for magnesium carbonate. Let's keep going. Aluminum sulfate. Aluminum is Al. It's got a plus 3 charge. Sulfate is SO4. And his charge is negative 2. So I will circle their charges so I can keep track of them easier. I'm going to cross them over. Cross them down. I'm going to write down exactly what I see, okay? and then I'm going to clean it up a bit. Al2, because I have multiples of this polyatomic, I'm going to put them in parentheses and call that a 3. So aluminum sulfate is Al2, SO4, 3. And again, you can distribute that 3 and think of it like this. You've got 3 sulfurs and 12 oxygens. But do not write it like that when you're writing out formulas. Write it like how I did in the box right there and you're good. Boron phosphate. The ending is 8. It's going to be the chart. Boron is a plus 3 charge. Phosphate is PO4. And this one has a pretty big charge. Okay, But first I'm going to put parentheses around this. So phosphate the phosphorus and the four oxygens have a charge of negative three. And now we're going to circle the charges and cross them over. And I'm going to write it like how I see it. Okay, and so first let's clean it up. B3, PO4, parentheses, three. So three sets of phosphate. But because the charges were the same, they're going to cancel out and simplify to just B, PO4. And at first, it just feels weird and awkward writing your formula that way, but just trust the rule, crisscross the charges, simplify if you have to, and then it's just BPO4. Let's do some of the exceptions. 
where you have ammonium, which is on the chart, but it does not end in ite nor eight. So ammonium is NH4 plus one. Arsenate is ASO4, and the charge is negative three. And now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this thing in parentheses to start off. Okay, so it's a little bit easier to understand. I'm gonna cross the three over and I will cross the one down to the opposite side. I'm gonna write down exactly like how I see it and now I'm gonna clean it up. So NH4 parentheses three, so that means three sets of ammonium. And now I have one set of arsenate, but what I could do now is I can then first take care of ammonium, so he's gonna say the same, but arsenate, I'm gonna omit the one and the parentheses and then write it just like that. Okay, I know it feels awkward, but that's how it's done. Ammonium arsenate, NH4, parentheses three, followed by ASO4. Second to last one, sodium hydroxide. Let's do it. Sodium is Na, it's got a plus one charge. Hydroxide is in the chart. It's one of those exceptions. Again, it doesn't end in it nor eight, but it's a polyatomic and it's got a charge of one, which I will cross over. So here I've got Na1OH parentheses one and I will then omit the ones and I will clean it up and I will call it NaOH, sodium hydroxide. And let's just get magnesium cyanide out of the way. Mg is plus two, obviously. Cyanide is a polyatomic with a negative one charge. Circle the charges, crisscross them, bring them down, put the one there, Put the two on the other side. Mg1, parentheses, Cn, parentheses two. So two sets of cyanide. Omit the one and call it Mg, parentheses, Cn2. So magnesium, cyanide, that's two sets of cyanide. So it's actually two carbons, two nitrogens, but leave it just like that. Alrighty, I hope you had fun naming polyatomic ionic compounds. Polyatomic ions are found pretty much everywhere in the world, okay, and they have so many household uses. For example, aluminum sulfate can help your hydrangeas turn blue. You have potassium phosphate, which is a type of salt that's found in Gatorade. You have Drano, which is the common name for sodium hydroxide, and Drano helps clear up your sinks and your clogged toilets and whatnot. And then finally, you have your Epsom salts, which we discussed earlier. And there's a lot of uses for Epsom salt, such as fertilizing plants and treating ankle sprains. I hope you guys learned a lot in this video. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Wind Chemistry.